Welcome back guys, this is Maverick here with another episode of ReZero. So, I'm going to be starting to pump out more of these episodes as I try to catch up to the end uh, before the second season releases in about two weeks, I guess. So expect to see more episodes coming up in the next two weeks or so. Uh, anyways, in the last episode, we were, re we were really treated to um, how well this series is utilizing Subaru's ability, right? Even though it's essentially a sort of get-out-of-jail-for-free card, um, there are repercussions there. And uh, the anime certainly does a good job of making these repercussions seem real and seem, you know, it, like, for instance, at the ending of the last episode where they were being chased by the Mabiste and whatnot, I always had a voice at the back of my head. I was like, oh damn, Subaru could die here, he could die here, he could die here. And there are real repercussions there. And it's something that is um, generally missing from a lot of works, especially Shonen and whatnot, where, you know, the advantages of plot armor and whatnot. We are also introduced to a little bit of more background context, background info in regards to the magics, in regards to Rim and Ram. Well, mostly Rim, but I'm assuming it applies to Ram as well, about them being half demons and whatnot. Uh, which I presume we'll learn more in this episode because, as I said at last episode, I really don't think uh, Subaru actually died this time. I think he's gonna wake up on the luxurious bed and everything will be fine. But I could be entirely wrong. Let's get into it and find out. Alright, let's begin in 3, 2, 1, play. I think he's fine. No, nah, okay. All right. So, so he didn't die, but it's an unfamiliar story. <laughs> Woo, man. That's OP. <laughs> Opening again? Alright. So, does this mean that we move forward a little bit? Have we cleared the stage? I mean, one can only assume so, right? He's past the, uh... Well, actually, no. Normally it would be on the fifth night, right? But with the way that he did it, this is only the... Third or fourth night? Hmm. Wouldn't it be so annoying if he dies right here again? Thank you. 
By the way, I also like how the opening and the ending themes to this anime really fits directly into the anime as well. It's probably specially written for it. I mean, yeah, it was noticeable in, from the first time. I don't think I explicitly mentioned it. So who broke the barrier? I think that's something that needs investigating, right? <laughs> Worst stuff. Hmm. It's already active. Oh. oh right. I guess if there's so many mummies, you know, if it if they get cursed due to biting. Yeah, I actually didn't think of that last episode. Damn. So would it work if you killed those my beasts? <laughs> oh, don't worry, it makes total sense. Yeah, so you need to go kill them a beast.
So it's rim off to Oh, she doesn't have demon form? Formless. That's a good attitude to have. Don't worry, the story's not going to end without you. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> Oh no. Village. <laughs> All using the nicknames that Zuru gave them.
So all the magic power goes there. That doesn't seem too fair. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was certainly a little bit reckless. <laughs> like I said, Nice. She's overusing magic. Ooh.
Oh, does she feel the, uh, the witch's uh, scent on him? So that's why? What is that beast? Damn. Now she wants to kill Rem, right? <laughs> now Chung. Why is he taking such a... The hell? Perfectly inspired methods. Yeah. This is seriously hype right now. I'm assuming how long their horns are also is a reflection of how strong their power is.
Did she just like So do they share power between them? And so that was why Ram decided to get rid of her horn. trying to be useful in other matters. Aww. Is she like gonna wander too deep into the forest or something? Training? No, what? I guess demon slayers.
Ah. So the, uh, the Witch of Envy. There's a head made here. Now he's caring too. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. Oh. Hmm. So, huh. Uh. <laughs> he's getting his uh, he's getting his idioms mixed up it's like a bunch of barrels are harder to break together and it is indeed three heads are better than one Ooh, ending. Ending song right now? Really? Damn. 
Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Just like what? Yeah, it's not that easy. Slap. Oh. Rosama. Roswell, right? Well, we did get back to the, you know, the guest room scene, but, uh... Super actually doesn't know about Elders, right? A flashback? Yeah, Super doesn't know anything about that.
<laughs> okay, that was it. Look at Ren. Oh, the chat, the episode is just called Ren? Hmm. Yeah, he is the one who who appeared and saved these two, right? Ah, it's only been four days. But there's still a fifth day. So this is the This isn't this the exact same as the fourth night? Yeah. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, innocent Emilia. <laughs> Better ending? Ah, okay, so I guess the uh, the intro to the ending is a little bit different each time. All right. Well, I'll see you guys after this. Well, there we go. Uh, I guess you could really call this episode the story of Ram Rim, right? Uh, even though, sure, lots of things happen, but it's all leading up to this uh, revelation and this sort of um, relationship development between Subaru and Rim. And man, I gotta say, that was that was a bit harsh. Uh, not not the not the scene where you know the, the demon the demon folk or whatnot were sort of prejudiced against him and so on and so forth, but or not even the fact that they became uh, orphans. Uh, but really, you know, the, the scene where Rem got her horn torn off and then Rem was like, oh, I'm so glad that it was torn off. Oof. Oof. That was, um, yeah, that was a little bit hard to, to see there, especially considering that all, you know, all Rem is actually doing for her. And, you know, the, the even more interesting thing here is I think Rem actually knows. I think she knows that Rem uh, fought this way. They probably actually talked about this before, right? Uh, especially since, um, you know, not only this, but in episodes past, we've seen uh, Rem talking about the, the Witch of Envy, right? In, in a not-so-good not so light, and not just uh, related with how normal people's per perception of it is. Uh, and not to mention the... Um, well, the, the story that Subaru told Ram before in, I believe, what was it? The, the third iteration or something like that? The second? I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but there was a time when uh, Ram was teaching Subaru to read, right? Read and write, and Subaru told her a story, and then Ram was like, uh, she probably shouldn't tell that story to Rem, she's not going to like it. I got a feeling that she probably knows um, about what Rem was going through and what was thinking through there but she still she still loves her as her sister all the same right um and i do find that the i do really um how should i how should i put this i'm really glad that in the scene where subaru was comforting rem uh they actually made an acknowledgement that he still doesn't know anything about what happened right because you know there there are it's nice and all that he's trying to cheer Rim up, but there are some attachments attached to to all that attached to that entire situation, if you will. So, um, you know, I'm sure that if um if he was just simply, uh, you know, just saying all this without anything else, I would be kind of like, hey, you know, man, even though you're you're um even though you're you're doing this from your kindness and your good heart and whatnot, it's a little bit more complicated than that, right? So I do um. I am glad that he made that disclaimer at the beginning as well, and the work made the disclaimer as well. Uh, and not really, I think, um, I can totally see why a lot of people are on Team Rim, right? And there's apparently Team Amelia, Team Rim, and, and so on and so forth. But, you know, as cute as Rem is, and don't get me wrong, I do love her development here, I really feel bad for Rem as well, right? She's She went through all this, you know, she did her hardest as as Rem's older sister to protect her, to make sure that she didn't feel left out, and etc, etc. Then, you know, she, she got into this situation, and, you know, having Rem also actually feel that way, in a sense, and now even then she's still doing her best to look out for, for Rem, right? We, we gotta give Rem some acknowledgement here. He, she's certainly not as close to Subaru as Amelia or Rem, but uh, I really feel bad for Rem as well. And, you know, it's, it's an interesting dynamic here because currently she's the one who's kind of sort of useless, right? So she's actually going through the exact same things as Rem went through before so perhaps that in itself is also something that helps her sort of um i do have a sneaking suspicion that that's probably also what helped her get through the situation as well allowing her to feel what ram was actually thinking through all that and so that's probably also why um she's not going to hold, be holding a grudge towards ram uh in regards to this way of thinking right uh, so yeah, and with all that, like I said, you know, we got Subaru, Ram, the interactions, Subaru has certainly had his fill of, uh, very protagonist-like, um, dialogue here, but funnily enough, 
uh, I feel like just because it's it's more or less expected, I'm a little bit more desensitized towards that. The thing that actually impressed me the most about Subaru's character in this episode uh, wasn't his cheering up of Rem or Rem. It was actually his interaction with the village people and the village kids, right? Now, I made this mention in the last episode as well uh, when he was talking with Rem about why he wants to go save the, the, the kids, right? Um, you know, and uh, I, I think somebody... I think someone did comment to me on, um, you know, it was always shown that Subaru w was able to play nice with the kids and all that. But I mean, that's one thing. That's one thing, right? But being actually able to give a real damn about the, the kids, I think that is actually something that's really, really hard to do. Especially in this situation where, you know, I've been talking about this entire series in a sort of gamification kind of mode, right? It's sort of like saving and reloading and all that. You need to clear a certain stage to move the story forward, etc, 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 right? So when we're playing games, it's easy to, to concentrate to focus on the main characters, the essential NPCs, if you will. And, and it's it's a pretty common habit for most of us to really not not really give a damn about all the other non-essential characters, the all the other non-essential uh, NPCs, which you know in in a lot of cases won't even really have names as well. But here they do actually, um, you know, they they take the effort into saying yeah these are real people. But that's not that's not anything special, right? As a lot of works have done that as well. But to have Subaru, you know, watching him actually be able to um, be able to um, to interact with the children and remember what they are called and what they all said to him and whatnot, even though it's it's literally not important, right? It, I'm definitely sure it's not important to anything else. But to able to give a damn about that, and also once he got back, going from house to house and checking up on all of the kids. Uh, that's what's definitely impressing me the most about Subaru's character, more so than any other dialogue that he had in the in this episode, right? Because lo most of that is something that we expect from shonen protagonists already. But this, I feel like, is definitely something, um, especially in this case where he's under this sort of circumstances with this kind of setting, these kinds of abilities and whatnot. Um, I have to tip my hat to him on this part. Um, so yeah. Uh, that's it. That's really much all I want to say for the episode in terms of the story and characters. Uh, we do have this development, right, where the magical beasts are drawn to the scent of the witch. Um, now, I did kind of guess that the witch was probably what allowed Subaru to have this sort of reset ability, right? Uh, I think I said as much in the last episode. I'm not quite sure there's any precedent for, for saying that the magical beast would be attracted to the sense of the witch. I'm assuming that Subaru assumed this just because, uh, you know, beings with with magical attunity, they will be able to detect this. But what? Um, well, like you said, it was a gamble, right? It definitely was a gamble. I'm just I'm just curious, like, what does that have anything to do with why the magical beasts want to go after Subaru, right? That's um, I'm not sure I see the connection there, but hey, it worked, and I guess it wouldn't really hurt to try, it anyways. So that is that. Uh, it was just a lucky guess, right? Um, his use of shadow magic, sham magic, uh, certainly surprised me. I didn't realize that he could suddenly control it to that extent, uh, and also against quite a high-level beast as well. Um, whatever, right? It, it didn't turn out to be the deciding factor here. It was still Rollswell showing up in the nick of time. But um, anyways, we do see that he's progressing, he's earned the trust of Rem, and to a certain extent, Ram and Betty and Rosewell as well. Now, with that being said, this is still only the fourth night, right? This is the night where things actually happen. So, and he literally still, um, funny enough, he, he's making his same promise of a date with Emilia on this night as well. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm guessing that he's cleared this stage, if you will, that, that time can move forward now, but uh, I don't know. The, the thing with this series is that you never really know, right? So it's always in the back of your head, ugh, are they going to try and, and, um, and do something bad at the worst of times, uh, you know, plot twist and whatnot? And I am looking forward to that. Um, I'm sure that eventually it will turn up sometime. So even even with the entire you know, sort of uh, good ending that we have right here, you can't really let your guard down. You can't let your guard down. <laughs> I would totally not be surprised. I would be surprised, but also not all that surprised if actually some twists happen in the next episode right right uh, at the end of this fourth night, right? 
But no, I, I would say uh, I'm more expecting the time to move forward and so so on so forth. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, I will be pumping out more episodes in the coming week or two as well, trying to get ready for Season 2. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.